Hey, what's up, Grinders? Colossus here, and welcome to my second video in grinding with Colossus. So, as you can see, I have my poker tracker up, and I filtered for the start since the start of this series, which is actually the beginning of this month. We are now the let me check, we are now the 15th of May, yes, we are the 15th of May. So starting from um, this month, and actually this year, because I didn't play a lot uh, this year, uh, I've played 5,000 hands at 5-0. My starting bankroll was $230, and as I mentioned in my first video, I am using the strategy, uh, strategy of my previous series, is how to win at the micro stakes, to build up my own bankroll together with you guys, anyone who wants to can join. I will post results um, in the Grinder School forums. But uh, I also uh, like to make a video series about it so that you can that you guys can actually see that this strategy really works and doesn't require like tons of study or a, a lot of work. Um, so my plan was with $230, which basically everybody should have, uh, you can definitely start at uh, 5 and all, uh, 6 max games. Um, and that's what I did. And I told you guys that after um, 10 buy-ins, winning at a current level, I would move up. And as you can see, uh, in, I've played only 5,000 hands in the last couple of weeks, but I did win uh, over a little bit over 10 buy-ins, uh, quicker than I thought. Um, the games definitely have not been uh, becoming really harder at 5 and all since the last uh, half year. So they're still easy to beat, um, if you use my strategy at least. So it's kind of unfortunate that I already crossed um, the uh, what I set up because I haven't made any 5 and L uh, video yet. So this video will still be 5 and L, and unless I lose like 10 buy-ins now uh, in this session, my next video will then be 10 and L, and I'll be, so to speak, be moving up uh, next week or in two weeks, um, depending on when the video is coming out. Anyway, uh, as I mentioned, I from the beginning of this month I used my how to uh, beat the micro stake strategy to uh, win 10 buy-ins my statistics I want to show them here uh, because I think you guys would be interested and it actually proves that um, you can attain this uh, result uh, very easily with some basic understanding of poker and playing really conservative uh, which basically means that if you uh, face any aggression or you are unsure whether you have the best hand it's better to check well fold or check behind uh, than to uh, bet uh, so and this kind of shows in uh, my statistics my VPIP of 20% preflop rate of 15% which is kind of standard I, uh, I mean if you use if you find any opening hand chart on the internet or on grinders go and you follow it most of the time you will be around 2015 um, so it's really standard what is uh, kind of off in my statistics here is definitely my tree betting basically I'm tree betting like two not even two percent which means like I'm bet tree betting aces and kings uh, and basically that's it uh, maybe ace king also uh, depending on the situation uh, my fault to three bet is I fold to three bets quite a bit, 75%. It's not, I don't fold too much to three bets because I found that people at the micro stakes don't three bet that often. So when they three bet, you can assume that they have a really strong hand. So have, yeah, if you have a hand which flops like really easily but with a lot of potential, um, like some uh, pocket pairs, for instance, uh, you can you can. Um, you can see the flop if the three bet isn't too high, and if your opponent has like a full size stack, and you know that he's willing to stack off with like an overpair on a pretty, uh, pretty bad uh, board. Uh, another thing that is kind of particular uh, about my style is my uh, one dollars at showdown. It's 
70%, uh, almost 70%, which is quite a, a lot. It means that when I go to showdown or when the hand goes to showdown, I usually win. Uh, the times that I lose is because I missed my draw and I don't want to bluff, so I check back on the river knowing that I will lose or uh, that I missed my draw and my opponent doesn't value bet against me and he goes to showdown and I just have to have like 8 high or something. Um, that's uh, when I don't win uh, at showdown but usually when I'm betting uh, or when I'm calling somebody's bet I'm pretty sure I have the best hand so that's why my one dollar at showdown is uh, quite big uh, for the rest um, uh, there's nothing really particular I can take a look uh, at my positional play, but uh, keep in mind this is only 5,000 hands. Um, it doesn't it doesn't say a lot. I'm winning from every position except from the big blind. But um, what you might actually see already is my um, statistics um, converging, so that on the button I'm definitely more looser than uh, from any uh, earlier position, and it's building up like this. Uh, definitely should be the same. I've shown this uh, in previous videos for a much uh, a much stronger uh, hand, um, hand count uh, or number of hands something like this. So uh, I, what I'm gonna do today is play one more five and session just like I did in the last um, two weeks. Uh, in the beginning it will be really a little bit um, disorderly because that's how the strategy works uh, just open up a lot of tables and opening up 10 12 15 tables and then always closing out the ones that I don't care about um, and in the end I might be actually only have like six tables left um, what else is there to show about 5,000 and nothing <laughs> nothing really much uh, the graph oh yeah uh, everybody likes graphs um, so I started off really well then I had a major breakdown here actually I tried a couple of bluffs um, even semi bluffs let's say it like this and I failed and I dropped and it really doesn't work I mean I sh sometimes I forget to keep myself to my own strategy and um, I mean things go wrong then I said okay I have to don't and just build it back up and wait for the hands and wait for your opponents to do stupid things and you will uh, you will definitely get there so with any further ado I would like to show you my lobby so I started off with about 230 damn my computer is so slow uh, I started off with about $230, so we are now... I didn't have any VPIPs because, uh, yeah, I didn't play in the last five months, four months, five months. Uh, so now we are $280, so, which is fun. Um, so let's uh, get uh, things going here. So what I usually do, I have the lobby open. I'm going to increase the size a bit. And let's check it out. Uh, okay, for this here we have somebody with a three dollar stack. That's I'm just jumping on. I'm just gonna jump on a lot of waiting lists uh, where no people are waiting, and usually where at least one of the people have uh, like a not full buying stack because that's the first read I can go on. The second read is. Uh, the green uh, tags that I uh, put on people, like for instance on this table in the last two weeks I must have had uh, two tags uh, on these people, uh, green ones, knowing that they are uh, bad people. For instance here again, uh, I do this a lot, um, I see other instructors do it a lot, I think if you're not doing it, you're doing yourself a, a major uh, disadvantage by not doing this it's so easy it doesn't take, require a lot of time and I you see I'm just clicking on the table and I can instantly see oh there's a, a donkey even if he's fully stacked and I'll jump on that table oh that was a misclick I accidentally clicked the table away I'm gonna move this because the table seemed to pop up in the beginning uh, in the middle yeah. 
There we go. So in the beginning it might be a little bit cha uh, chaotic with uh, tables loading up, but I just really want to show you guys how this stuff works when I'm actually what I'm actually doing when I'm what I, what is actually happening when I'm grinding uh, myself. Of course, when I'm doing this myself, I don't have to speak out loud and uh, so if I'm a little bit more silent while tables are popping up, it's just because I'm focusing on getting myself on the best tables. If you want to know what the best tables are, I suggest you well, I'm not gonna rehash my entire previous series, so I suggest you watch them and go from there. What I did not show you yet is the hands where I made most of my money. Most of my money, like, um, um, seriously, uh, like 90% of my money. This is an easy fold, by the way, Ace Jack. Um, most of my money is coming from the dog. It's like 90% of my money is from the fish. Let's see how many tables we've got open now. We've only got seven open, so. go on a little bit more of waiting lists I hope the screen is not too small for you but when I, once I close the tables I will enlarge it the tables again so that you guys can actually see some of the stats oh I have a problem my poker tracker is not running okay so let's do this quickly because that's one of the that's actually the third, the third thing I'm basing my uh, good tables on First I'm looking at stack size, then I'm looking at the green tags, and then I'm looking at the statistics of my opponents. Like if you have something, somebody after two orbits and he played every single hand, that's a good table. You stay on that table. Um, once I start my import of poker tracker, it always lags a little bit, so... A little patience. was going on and uh, this guy you see I tagged him green in one of my previous sessions he's now limping in in the bottom left uh, into my big blinds so I'm just gonna raise it up with jack nine up suit you can check behind sometimes I can check behind because the hand I'm not really interested in um, the hands where I win money is like aces kings ace king queens uh, all pocket pairs ace queen and that's about it so if you only play those hands you'll be doing fine and I'll fold all, fold all the rest and play 20 tables. Of course, I'm just opening a little bit more tables. And it's gonna be okay, I can close this one because everybody left. I could ISO race here with Jack 6 suited, and I'm gonna do it on the button. You can, uh, you can fold. Uh, it's not gonna make a huge difference. It's a king high flop, but two people, uh, one of them dunks into me. Um, for that kind of money, I can fall with a back door. I think I have practically immediate odds um, to call. Um, it's kind of weird that he dunks. Um, I'm gonna treat his dunk. I'm just gonna raise him once and treat it as an um, treat it as a check. Uh, basically, and he did fold. Okay, I'm gonna slow down with opening tables and let these ones run a little bit, just a little bit, just to see um, which ones are good and which one I can uh, quickly close out. Normally, I would be opening up a little bit more tables, but uh, we're doing fine just the way it is. I also can't record my entire screen, so... 5, 6, 7, nothing, 4, 10, 4, 
I'm gonna be a little bit more silent now just because um, looking around the tables trying to find which ones will be useless to sit at but just because it's gonna be a waste of my time and for now I am not talking really about uh, any strategy plan well any basically any hands that I'm playing have to fold the queens um, I should have bet the turn in my opinion on the top left yeah that guy we're gonna take him green is just over shoving my open I should maybe silent my poker stars sounds let me just quickly do that a little bit so that it's not annoying to you guys to always hear the beeping sounds but I still want to hear them because it warns me when I'm timing out obviously I probably have the best hand I'm gonna make like a small value well no it's not uh, not worth making a small value bet I think if he bets on, yeah, he has tens. He's never falling that to a bet. Still, I'm gonna take it. That guy, green too, is playing on his iPad. Okay, I want to close out a few tables, but the tables are really are really good in the sense that I see a lot of fish it's now Friday 4 p.m. so don't know seems like a lot of fish don't have a real job notice that also when I miss the flop I, uh, I don't waste time trying to fight back it's basically I'm playing hit or miss uh, type of game okay so which table this one is a uh, not uh, I did take this guy green I'm gonna close out a few tables. This one seems. No, this guy is back into the pot. I mean, they're all good. Damn. No, this one not. Okay, I can sit out this one on the middle left. It's going out. Because like 17, 0, 14, 10, 18, 18. No, this one is out. that one over there uh, five king I'm gonna raise it because there seems to be an, uh, a fish in the blinds We flop top pair, but it's not the greatest. I don't want to get raised on this board. Uh, and if he calls, I'm not really. Uh, what am I gonna do here? I'm actually gonna make a small three bit there. So I'm just gonna check this behind and try to get some value um, afterwards. And I was hoping here that he would shove. I'm pretty happy. I think it's the guy who shoved previously. Okay, we're flipping. Uh, 
Uh, pocket force, what happens? I have to see about this one. Uh, fold it versus erase. I'm, so I'm just scanning tables, constantly scanning tables. Uh, I don't like the table in the middle on the bottom. Um, And on the top left is also uh, gone. So that one is also out if the blinds come around. And I'm also going to sit out there. Um, 15-8. I'm not going to treat about pocket queens. First as an under the gun race from Saudi playing 15-8. Just going to play it slow. I know it might not be the plus most plus EV way, I know, but I want the less the least swingy. And basically I'm just calling him down on that board. Uh, Queen 10 suited um, it's fully stacked and so I'm gonna call there and I have position. I will win with pocket queens. Let's check what he has. That's a nice flop on the middle left. I'm gonna raise. No, slow playing is not my style uh, ever. I'm just gonna uh, think about. Uh, then raise. And let's take a look what the guy had when I had pocket queens. Is Jack? Mm. Uh, pocket fives. Check. Mm, this guy bets. He's got. I'm just gonna fold my pocket fives. Set mining and. Uh, But Colossus, you probably had the best hand. Well, I know, but then comes the turn and then the river, and uh, I mean, you really don't know what to do on the turn and the river, uh, especially when you're playing five and all. So it's better just to, you missed, be done with it. Just gonna get on this table also. So we're playing nine tables now. But I will close out because I think it's green for you guys. Is not the, uh, this is not easy for, uh, to follow. It's also not easy to comment uh, on any hands. This one is out. That one is in. This one is also out. Why is this one? Oh. No, I don't want. I want to keep on the, in the table in the middle. Middle. I want to be on that table. Um, somebody limped in there, playing forty-nine. Yeah, folding nine. Yeah. Not the best flop. I'm not even gonna see about this one um, with H Jack. He's got a small pocket pair per gorilla, and he's not gonna fall to one bet. Gonna be have to barrel and. Uh, I'm not in the mood for barreling. Oh, it's the same guy again. I have ace queen, six jack, four. Uh, I'm actually gonna check in here. I missed, uh, so I'm not betting, and I'm actually falling to his bet. Pocket greens, hopefully we can get some of this money. Especially in the blinds, this guy also gonna attack in green. So good flop. 
unless he has a six, which is possible. You never know with these guys. I could have made him. Uh, he min raises. Um, I don't want to re-raise here because if he has a six, I mean, all the money is going in. Um, so either he can be bluffing, and I don't want to like. Uh, that's not a good card. Because now the ten also beats me. He jacks. I'm just gonna. I wonder if I ever get uh, paid off. Uh, I'm just gonna check. And that's a good card. Your bets were all in. If he has a six, uh, if he has the fault, he had nothing. Even if he had a six, he would have called it off there. So he was bluffing when he min raised me on the flop. Okay, and let's see if I can close out. Oh, but these tables are so good. Okay, I'm closing out this one. On the top right, just because nobody seems like loose passive. This is a good table. This guy is a donkey. Uh, nine ten suited. I'm gonna raise this. It's kind of loose, for. But I feel like the people in the blinds are pretty bad. Playing 44, 44, 44, and that guy also 40% of his hands. Um, I'm gonna check this board just because I have showdown value. Uh, getting raised here would kind of suck. Um, so I'm just gonna check and I take it from there. He has the jacks. Uh, he never does this with the jack, so I have the best hand. So I'm trying to get some value out of it. I'm off that table. Okay, if I can close out one more table, um, we can actually, and I think it will be that one. Yep. And then we have six tables open where basically we are really good. Okay, so let's take a look at the bottom left. Um, pocket fives. This is a hand that I will now call the three bet. He's fully stacked. He doesn't raise after 185 hands. And now he three bets. So basically he's got a higher pocket pair. So I'm just because I know he, I will get his money when I flop my five. Um, we don't, so we're done with the hand. But I have to be like almost really, really sure. And now he pots it, so you know he has a, a, a an over pair. It's got something like pocket aces, pocket kings. So I'm just falling. I didn't hit my five. Okay, so now we got our six tables up. Unfortunately. This table is also a sit out. And the bottom right, somebody got stacked and uh, a fish apparently because that one is also a sit out table. I'm not gonna call that um, 3 bet here with 9 10 suited. I'll see if I can get on. A few more because now I have a little bit not enough tables going. Uh, also often I min race from the button because people don't really 3 bet and they kind of, oh interesting on table number on bottom left. Uh, cold 4 bet is like almost never done. Um, but uh, I really don't have an option.
if I call the guy on the button is also coming along and we're going three way to the, to the flop uh, which isn't the best with pocket aces so I mean, you're kind of setting yourself up to lose a huge pot some of the people who I tagged green might not be as green as I thought uh, like the guy on table number two now we get three bet again uh, with this green but it's an easy fold uh, against the guy only three bets five percent so just let him have it I'm basically focusing on the both guys on my right on table number two because I feel like the British guy here might not be the best player uh, seven five. This is interesting because the guy. Uh, no, I'm only interested in the guy on my immediate right on table number four, which is now table number five. Simple C bets and be done with it if he calls. Again, I'm focused here on the, yeah, uh, on the guy on my right, I'm playing 28-9, kind of loose passive. Again, simple C bet against the guy playing 10-6 and be done with it if he calls. He has position, so chances that he calls are uh, higher, but uh, he's playing 10-6, so he's not going to make any moves. And you know, I hope we get a f some tables popping up. Because I don't like my tables actually now. Nope. It can change really fast these uh, these tables. Once the donkey leaves, once the donkey gets stacked, I mean you should basically also be getting off that table if he was your target. So I'm trying to see, and that's constantly what I'm doing, constantly. And I can do it because all my decisions are so, like, they're so automatic. Um, that I have time to do this and in the meantime play 10 tables. And basically, this is what I've been doing for the last uh, 5,000 hands. 5,000 hands. I mean, in two weeks, I'm a little bit ashamed because that's not a lot of going. But as you might know, um, I'm in the midst of moving. And well, moving. <laughs> the, the place is not finished yet, so still in the midst of preparing my walls to be painted and stuff okay we got a couple tables going hopefully there's a few better ones Uh, ace 8 off suit top right uh, I'm gonna defend my big blind here if you see bets that flop I'm done if he checks to me I'll bet I'll bet 20 win I'm just gonna see bet here on the top middle just because the guy is so nitty um, against any other guy I would fault this but um, I would check fault uh, but if a guy playing 40 and 10 is not gonna like, float you to steal it from you I 
actually gonna leave the top middle table because the fish is so short it's a little bit too short maybe we can get his money now three betting the kings obviously I'm actually just gonna call with the pocket aces. Don't need to three bets. Um, we got three bet here, four bets. Calling the over bet from the fish. This guy ships in, I'm falling, and we're good. I'm uh, kind of careful with the pocket kings there on that board. Um, here, I have to bet like half the pot and get it in. There's nothing I can do. It's not the best card, not at all. And there's. I'm actually gonna check. Nah, do I really want to check it to him? Uh, I'm just gonna get it then. I mean, oh, what happened here? Did he fall? Yep. So as you can see, I'm really conservative. I mean, even if I have like an over pair and some needy guys start calling uh, just because I know that I won't get to the river with anything worse than a single pair of type of hands against fish I don't care um, they go to the river with like seven high um, so I rarely very rarely lose a pot against somebody who's playing 14-10 well at least a big pot I'd say it like this just because I'm really suspicious when these guys uh, start raising especially at 5 and L. Um, I don't have a read on the top left to make any type of to, to make any call here although the guy is so short is queen I'm just gonna let it go it's his first hand on the table And this table is a bad one. Leaving. It's really. I know this video is really like. Oof. But that's how it goes, you guys. I hope you guys are watching this because you're playing the micro stakes and you wanna build up your bankroll. Well, this is exactly how you do it. Just constantly opening, closing tables. And in the beginning, you might say, "Now this is not poker. This is this is like bum hunting, and or whatever you call it. You're not thinking about hands. You're just yeah, you're just clicking uh, three bet by a guy. I only three bet at once. So I'm just gonna fold. I'm not here really for that guy. Um, more for that guy." Give it green tag. Could have checked behind here on table number one. But
Pink ten of suits. There is a donkey in here. Um, but King ten of suits is just too too bad of a hand. It's too dominated. On the middle table I'm staying because I have this guy. I'm gonna tag him like orange, like I don't know if he's any good, but he played five hands and he's playing 62. It doesn't mean anything because it's just a small sample size, but it would be nice if he's a fish because he's on my immediate right. Um, I really don't like the calling here with Queen Jack suited, but um, I, I also don't like folding, so three betting would have been a better option, but as a you guys know I'm playing this really conservative. Ugh, that's the worst card in the deck that could have come. Well, the King of Diamonds would have been maybe worse, but. Uh Still calling. Uh, that's a great card. Especially, I'm gonna check raise him now. Instantly fault, so he didn't even have the straight. Table in the middle definitely is a crappy table. Um, this table, okay. So I'm gonna close out three tables and keep six tables going and then we can um, play a little bit. The guy can, but it doesn't seem like it but I can assure you that this way you make money. Um, and I haven't really played like f any, f put in any thought in the hands. The fact that this guy bets full pot, a 15-12 guy another guy calls and I have like not a bad hand but it's not a hand I'm so I'm basically gonna fall to ace nine there seems like ridiculous but I don't think uh, a lot of good things can come from uh, calling there As you see, sometimes I check behind here with my king for six king jack, just to um, just to be a little bit. Um, yeah, how to? Oh, this is not a good card because either it stops my action because I have a lot more aces in my range than he does. you see we win a decent no a small pot but yeah 
we got like middle pair. Uh, we've got a bet uh, in on the river, um, which if you are with a better turn, he would have folded definitely. Uh, if I would have better flop, better flop. Um, I think he would float if I uh, bet the flop. I don't understand his river bet though, he has showdown value. Uh, probably he also doesn't know why he did it. Mm. I don't know why he bets there on the river. I mean, he's only gonna get called by better. And he's not rapping a whole lot. Okay, so we have got six tables I can Tell them, make them a little bit bigger. No, and I'm not gonna switch out anymore for, for sake of the video. Ace Queen, nice hand um, to play against the fish. Uh, it's a high card type of hand, so uh, if I hit my ace or a queen, I'm pretty happy getting it in for three dollars fifty cents. I'm gonna remove this guy's tag. Since it did check instantly fast twice, I'm just gonna make a bet here and hopefully it's got something like ace king and folds to my bet here. Uh, he snap calls him. Kinda curious at what he checks twice and then snap calls on the turn. Pocket sevens, nah. I don't know, maybe we still have the best hand. Could be that he has something like King Queen. Jack King. Yeah, didn't bet the turn, okay. On table number three, this was kind of a mistake to me. Uh, if I see checks twice to me, I should have bet the turn. Uh, wasn't paying attention. Again, here I can check. Sometimes I check on table number two, sometimes I bet because I don't really want to get raised uh, if I bet. Um, actually, I'm gonna. Uh, check it, be a little bit like sneaky if you can call it uh, that way. Now, if he has a pair of nines, he will call. I mean, it's kind of. Uh, once he parts the river, I think I can fold. Um, it's not a good card on table number four. Basically, it's a, ba a really bad. I mean, I have to f know it was four ways somebody is chasing the flush, so. I'm gonna check this one behind. Um, I could make like a small bet here. I don't know what's gonna call me. Um, Not the guy who's gonna raise a river, so I'm gonna bet and hopefully get called by a pair of tens or some nine trip nines. It works. Uh, any other pair of tens? It's 
so as, as, you, as you can see this is really like I am so needy I'm so well so careful I don't want to lose big parts and it's true I'm not playing the most EV way I never said this is the most EV way but this this works um, especially at the micro stakes uh, ace king I don't want to make it three ways so I'm gonna raise it a little bit I um, don't expect this guy ever to fall to a three bet uh, by the way um, you know, on the button well he's playing 17 13 but he's only half stacked I know so he does fall some of these guys have like decent st uh, stats but then they still play like with two to all uh, 50 big blinds Table number six. I oh know this guy is a major fish. Table number three. Let's take a quick look. It's not a decent table. The one and fishy type of guy is on my immediate left. Uh, whether to. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna squeeze here just because I don't want this three way. Yeah, I'm gonna squeeze whether I want to get it in versus this guy I just want to get the donkey um, to call it's not the donkey who calls it's the regular guy it's a, not, it's a great flop if he has an ace he's never falling um, I can bet like half pot and uh, if he has pocket jacks or pocket dance, he's gonna fold anyway, it doesn't really matter. Uh, five, six. I have to bet here to protect my hand, and there's too many bad cards that can come off. Five is a good card, uh, not too many. Five should be in his range. Um, He's not floating, he's got a pair of something. Uh, I'm gonna check and then bet the river. I'm, I'm probably calling any bet that he does now. He's gonna bluff uh, all his misdraws. It's kind of annoying that when he hits the 8, but keep in mind that if I would have bet on the turn, he would have not folded anyway, so uh, we've got... Uh, he did bluff the river. Uh, wow, oh, this guy dunks into a lot of people. He's gonna make the call here. That's not a good card. Um, he's not aggressive at all, I don't think. I'm not too happy here. Um, and I'm actually going to fold it. I mean, this might seem confusing, but um, I forgot how it went pre-flop, though, and that's my be kind of raised. And then, I mean, his range contains a lot of like sets, in my opinion, sevens and nines, and he doesn't want to get like checked through with so many people. Um, so he start decides to bet, and then the flush gets there. <gasps> And he's not so sure anymore because chances are that somebody uh, he dunks again. Uh, he does this uh, apparently 
quite often. Hmm. I'm gonna make a note on him. I'm just gonna make a quick note on him. I probably, now that I've seen it twice in a row, I might have not folded on the turn there with Ace King. Here with the pocket trees, I mean, I have to bet once he checks to me. And it means, a lot of the time, it just means that people want to fold, uh, just check fold. And keep in mind, when you are the preflop raiser, and you're out of position and you're checking this board to your opponent, it basically means that you're giving up. Uh, you're seeing him just bet and go to the next hand. So... That was... Uh, quite straightforward. It's we haven't gotten any major hands, but um, I think we're definitely approximately at one hour of play. I'm not gonna see about this board on table number three. Just wanna go to showdown with ace high. I think the video has been running for. I'm gonna continue two more minutes. And keep on tagging people. And if I were actually playing, I would uh, definitely be closing out some of the tables and keep on switching back and forth. Um, weekends are great. I mean, there's so many uh, bad players. Uh, pocket nines, I'm just gonna come. Well, no, it's too. Uh, if it were pocket sevens, I would complete, but pocket nines is too good just to. Uh, just to limp in there. Uh, and when, as I say that, we get raised. I think we have to fold here with the pocket lines now. Seven eight was an ISO race. Uh, we flop a pair of sevens. As for protection, I am going to bet here. If I get raised, it's an easy fold. Um, um, I'm gonna check, there's no really bad card to come. Um, Jacks. He's gonna call with like ace high, so I'm gonna make like a bet that doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, It does decide to fold. Oh, 
Okay, I'm gonna um, quit this video. I hope the next video will be at 10 and all, as I've like this made 10 buy ins at 5 and all. Hopefully, uh, 10 and all um, plays the same, and I can quickly get to uh, 25. Maybe I'll take 16 and all. Yeah, I'll do 16 and all also. And then 25 and all, 50 and all. I think I will go up to 100 and all. Um, and but that's still a very long way to go. I think at 5 and all, 10 and all will be uh, fairly fast. 25 and all will be might be a little bit more tricky just because the amount of uh, fish is going to be way less. Okay, so this was Colossal Free Grinder School. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see. If you have any questions, please put them in the forums. I started a, a topic, Grinding with Colossus, in the Grinder School general, general forum. If you have any comments or you want to uh, try out my strategy and post your results, do it over there, uh, or uh, either uh, put it in this uh, at this uh, video. And I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Bye.